Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. Today we're going to be diving into cryptocurrency regulations because I believe they are coming perhaps by the end of this year. Things seem to be heating up. We are seeing a number of exchanges get kind of strangled um, by threats of regulatory repercussions. Binance, for example, is a big one. Binance wind down derivatives in Europe and other countries such as Malaysia just outright ban the company to close essentially in that country, in that jurisdiction. We know in the UK, um, a number of banks, Barclays, Santander and NatWest have come out and said they're going to block um, people from sending their money, transacting and, and sending money from their bank account to Binance. This is unbelievably hypocritical. The fact that a bank is telling you how to spend your money that you've worked for, you've paid taxes on, is insane. They don't stop you from gambling, drinking, smoking, doing other, other um, sort of detrimental things for your health and well-being. However, they will stop you from making an investment that could help to change you and your family's lives. Um, and that's what I believe the opportunity that crypto uh, certainly the right cryptocurrencies kind of proposed at the moment because you are an early adopter in a technology and a space that has um, a lot of room to grow at a 1.66 trillion dollar market cap um, you know ftx and binance remove high leverage they had 100 plus leverage they're now both limiting it to 20x this is obviously in direct response to regulatory uncertainty and uniswap which is one i'm absolutely shocked by because a decentralized exchange is getting controlled by a centralized entity such as uh, a government Uniswap delist 100 tokens from interface, including options and index. They'll be doing this because they will want to partner with people like PayPal. There's a deleted video of them talking about PayPal, etc., etc. What I want to do, guys, is play a clip of Senator Elizabeth Warren talking directly about cryptocurrency regulations. Um, this is just going to give you an idea of where they're going. And really what I'm going to do is point out the hypocrisy in it. Now, let me just say I'm not against regular regulations for crypto because... Yes, this is going to kind of maybe uh, take out an element of decentralization. You are essentially going to have to ask permission for a permissionless asset. But what this is also going to do, and if you are here to make money, it was going to allow that next step of um, adoption. Because once we have regulatory clarity, it gives people the green light. There are many people out there and companies and, and institutions that will not get into crypto due to fear of regulatory repercussions and how that may impact their business. Uh, and their investment, more importantly. Um, so we're going to jump into this clip, guys. We're going to review it. I'm really going to be pointing out the hypocrisy in all of this. Um, like I say, I'm not against regulatory clarity. There seems to be a new infrastructure bill looks to, to raise 30 billion through crypto taxes. I mean, they're doing such a lousy job. Uh, the government. I'm not against taxes. Um, as libertarian as I am, I believe that we should pay taxes. Um, I just don't think we should pay taxes to crooks who just completely misspend it um, and essentially mismanage it, or just make a complete shambles of the whole whole thing. It, it, it's. I have no issue with paying taxes as long as it goes um, on the appropriate things. You know, as long as it actually is there to help people out. Um, whereas taxes just seem to go to private interests private jets, just stupid, ridiculous things. Um, so I'm really against it. So th this, this is a bill that they're proposing. Um, this essentially, according to the draft, a uh, copy of the bill shared with Coindesk, any broker that transfers any digital asset would need to file a return under a modified information reporting regime. It says any broker, they mean anybody that transacts crypto, essentially. Uh, the draft defines digital assets as any digital representation of value recorded on a cryptographic secure digital or distributed ledger or related technology. It also includes decentralized exchanges and peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces in its definition of broker. So uh, it's coming, guys. Uh, like I say, there are pros and cons to it, um, but this this would be really detrimental um, because this would make crypto very cumbersome um, and would really exclude, certainly in regards with having to pay accountants and, and stuff like that, your average retail guy. Um, and this really does actually hinder adoption. So let's play the clip, guys. Let's point out the hypocrisy in it because there's so much in it. Senator Warren has been very against crypto. Um, and the reason really is because these guys want the US dollar to be king, even though it, that's the biggest Ponzi scheme of them all. So let's jump straight into it, guys, and then let's review it. Senator Warren joins us right now. She, of course, chairs the Banking Subcommittee on Economic Policy. Senator, welcome, and thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you. It was Good fascinating. to be here. It was fascinating to watch the hearing uh, yesterday, 
And, and here's where I wanted to, to start the conversation. We had, a, we had Mike Novogratz on the program in the last hour. He's in the crypto uh, business, in the industry. And one of the big questions is, is how to regulate the industry, but also when to regulate the industry, because <laughs> there is an element where this is, an, this is still early stage. It's still startup. And how much regulation do you want to put on? I mean, Bitcoin's only been here for 12 years uh, and Ethereum 2013, I think Ethereum came out um, and they, they, there's, they're no closer really to regulating this than they are. But it is coming. They have obviously been working behind the scenes. You've got Gary Gensler, who's the chairman of the SEC now. He used to teach blockchain, very uh, actually more knowledgeable than most YouTubers out there on the crypto space. Um, so I'm hoping this goes in the right way. We do have some champions, some crypto knights in the government. However, um, you know, of course, they want their slice of the pie, and this is how they're going to get it up. So I'll, I'll play the clip. On now, um, in the same same kind of breath that we would have had a conversation about, should have we regulated the internet more or not in the 1990s? You know, you might look at this another way. Look at the lesson from history about when do we regulate drugs? Um, as long as people can sell snake oil. It turns out that nobody really invested in having good drugs that were safe and that helped people. And once we really had an FDA that stood up and that said, you know what, we're going to test these drugs before they go on the market. We're going to assure the public that they are safe. Then look what happened. We got a whole lot more investment and obviously a much bigger market that helped the entire world. So what she is saying there is exactly the point we made. It's going to allow more investment in the space because there'll be more clarity and more kind of certainty in the direction that it's going. But the fact that she is comparing cryptocurrency to the use of drugs. Uh, this is the uh, senator, by the way, guys, of the United States comparing crypto to drugs. I mean, they... <laughs> That doesn't make sense to me. She did have a very good point about allowing more investment into the space. Um, but what it really created was a complete monopoly on the drug industry. Um, you know, absolute monopoly. And we're seeing the fruits of that today, guys. I'm not going to go too deep down that rabbit hole. Um, but this makes me sick. Um, absolutely. I need a bucket right now to throw up in. Drugs and crypto are two completely different industries that need to be regulated in a completely different manner. I don't want to wait until a whole lot of people, a whole lot of small investors, a whole lot of small traders have been completely wiped out. I think rules of the road that are there at the beginning that people say, you know, we got a cop on the beat, give people a lot of confidence. And they mean that the bad actors know, hey, somebody's watching out and we can't keep pushing frauds on people. Senator, what do you make of this, though? And, and I, I've got in this critique, if like, and I'm not being rude here, guys. It's quite obvious what is and isn't a scam in crypto. You only need to do a very small amount of digging and due diligence yourself to work that out. If you are investing in Doge, Elon, Mars, and you get wrecked as a result of that, you really should have known what you were getting into. It's not the government's place to tell you and protect you. It is your... that You need to... Th this is what drives me up the wall. This is how government have, allowed, have been allowed to take as much power as they have. Government have gone from being for the people to the people being for the government. You know, you work for the government now, not the other way around. The government doesn't work for you. And the, how they've done this is in the name of protecting you. As a human being, you should be able to be compassmentous enough. And if you're not, then of course somebody else should step in in your best interests. You should be compass mentis enough to make your own decisions to recognize scams when you see it. And if you don't and you get burned, the onus is really on you. But I do think that an element of regulatory clarity is absolutely needed. Let's play it, guy. I keep interrupting because this is infuriating for me to watch. Uh, myself, I often talk about trying to protect uh, the little guy, uh, the, the small investor, uh, whether it's around crypto or um, some of the, the meme stocks and the like. And what I often hear now from people is, no, 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 Andrew, stop. Don't protect me. You're not protecting me by talking about, by, by trying to do that. You're actually protecting the big guy. You're protecting the establishment. That if you actually regulate this system, 
it, 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 that the little guy is not the one that becomes the beneficiary of it. Give us the freedom to invest in what we want. I, that's a but, message that I keep hearing. I, Amen, I brother. want people to have freedom to invest. I just don't want a system where the big guys, where the shadowy guys, where the guys you never quite see can get out there and do pump and dump. Like the uh, government. Can defraud people, can take in a lot of folks' money and then disappear. You know, it, like the I government. think the question is not just regulation. The question is how it's aimed. Who takes advantage of there being no rules? It's the big guys. Who wins when there's no cop on the beat? It's the big guys. So that's the part that I care about, and I care about it happening before a lot of people have been wiped down. Do, do you believe crypto, uh, do you believe in crypto as, as an idea? I mean, is this something that you think um, personally has, has a great future? And is this something that you think I, may or may disrupt the financial industry in a positive way? So look, right now, one of the things that I think is very interesting is digital currency. You know, goodness knows that there has been an enormous failure by the big banks to reach consumers. Biggest bank in the world, by the way, guys, is the Federal, um, the Federal Reserve. You know, she's calling out herself. Um, she, but what they rely on, by the way, guys, is you guys being uneducated. Um, the biggest bank in the world is the Federal Reserve. Undoubtedly, maybe the World Bank comes very close, um, but they have failed people. The very people she works for and propagates and tells people to hold their money in cash and that, you know, this is risky and you shouldn't get in it. She's calling out. She doesn't even realize she's doing it because they're so used to um, concealing the truth and, 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 and misdirecting people that it's just crazy, absolutely crazy. Consumers all across the country. Talk about the people, the millions of people who are unbanked or underbanked, who are paying um, uh, way too much just to be able to have their paychecks cashed or to be able to pay their utility bills and their rents, just to try to get a little edge into the financial system because they don't have standard checking accounts. Digital currency and central bank digital currency may be an answer there because the costs are extraordinarily low for being able to transact. And maybe that will be a way going forward uh, that we get more people into the system. What do you make of the idea that there's a whole bunch of people who've invested in Bitcoin who are buying it mm -hmm. as, an infl as an inflation hedge because they believe that the government is spending too much money? Well, I look, people can make their own investment decisions, but to do... Did she really just say people can make their own investment decisions after coming on here and the whole pretense is that you are essentially student... You're not educated enough um, for the government to allow you to have your own decisions in what you invest in. And she... Is anybody else finding this extremely um, contradictory? Because it, it, to me, this is just like, she says one thing and then reneges on it and, and comes out in opposition. You know, you can't say that people can have their own investment decisions whilst telling them that they're not allowed to um, perhaps invest in certain things through whatever mediums and, you know, banks. I mean, people should have, this is the Senator of the United States. Why are banks banning you from sending your money to Binance and purchasing crypto? If you're allowed to have your own investment decisions, it's just ridiculous, guys. Do that somehow assumes two things. One is that what's happening with Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency is somehow going to be divorced from what's happening elsewhere in the economy. And secondly, that that the crypto coins are not going to have their own inflationary pressures. Uh, they may come from a different she does source have a point there. than uh, what happens with dollars. But look at what's happened uh, in the high volatility in the price of these things. The idea that somehow they're a protection or a hedge, I, I don't think that's going to be borne out over time. Shepherd 
Well, that was uh, Elizabeth Warren talking about some uh, related crypto country. She's also in, in, very in favor of the wealth tax. Um, she did say some really positive things there, like, you know, regulations would allow uh, big investors, which is the way we think this is going. <coughs> um, it does a lot. It, there's pros and cons, guys, but just understand that regulations are coming. Um, you are going to have to get in line with this. Certainly in the Western world, I mean, there are, if they come too harshly down and really try and restrict this area, there are ways you can get around it. I'm not going to suggest that you do that on this channel. Um, at all um, because I do believe you should pay your taxes because the alternative is going to jail uh, and you know one you know it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer really isn't it but to try and um, minimize your taxes and um, we'll absolutely promote that on this channel we think you should definitely try and minimize your taxes um, why wouldn't you uh, everybody does it it's legal to do so um, we just don't want anybody veering on the sides of illegal um, because that's, you know, of course, it doesn't pay off, guys. You can't beat these guys, really. They've got a complete monopoly on, on even the law system. Um, so that's really all I have for you guys. Regulations are coming. Uh, this infrastructure bill, let's hope this doesn't get passed because this is really going to um, make crypto extremely cumbersome and really cull off any of the little guys because they're going to have to file returns every time they transact, which restricts the crypto space massively. Um, uh, additionally, digital assets are added to the currency rule regarding businesses and regular payments over ten thousand pounds. Just so much going on right now, guys. Uh, ultimately, they they want their slice of the pie. You are going to have to pay taxes on crypto twenty percent in the UK unless you're in the higher tax bracket um, for capital gains. It, this is this is this is what's coming, guys. Um, you know, and ultimately, this, like I say, once this has all been ironed out and there is some regulatory clarity, you will see banks allow payment rails. Um, back onto these on and off of these exchanges um, but there are ways you can get around it guys um, you just need to do a little bit of digging make sure you're safe and you do due diligence um, on you know what exchanges you could you don't need KYC for and what ones you do uh, and how you can move money around the crypto space that is really all I have for you guys let me know what you think in the comment section do you think regulations are a good or bad thing for crypto I think there are pros and cons um, I think if I was leaning towards one I think for uh, adoption, they're a good thing, um, but they just then become a, a, a under the control of a, a, the government, which is a centralized entity, which kind of kills. John McAfee, uh, rest in peace, um, said, you know, it, it, it's just completely hypocris hip hypocritical that we have to ask permission for a permissionless asset. So all I have for you, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. Have a fantastic Sunday, guys. I've got another two videos coming out today, so stay tuned, and I'll see you all in the next YouTube video. Thanks a lot for watching.